Good morning, folks. Thank you for joining Minister Elise McLeod's uh, telephone town hall. This is the sixth one she's done, by the way. Uh, approximately 8,000 people have uh, been part of these calls, so welcome here today. For those of you uh, that are new and for returning, uh, the minister is excellent at answering your questions live. So we do have people that were eager and sent in questions to the minister. I'll get through some of those, but also we do want to hear from you live. So you hit three on your phone and we'll queue you up through Eric to ask minister a direct question. We've seen a ton of progress uh, as a result of uh, these calls. Um, I'm, I'm the CEO uh, of the Ontario Real Estate Association. I'm also a recovering politician, having uh, been at Queen's Park for 21 years. I had the honor of serving and working with many of you as a one-time Minister of Tourism, Culture, and Recreation. And I just want to say, like, I think Minister Cloud has done an incredible job, number one, of reaching out uh, to uh, all of you uh, in the sector, wherever you uh, live and work in the province, listening to what you had to say, and then taking a plan to be your champion uh, back to Premier Ford and Cabinet. Uh, and now we see a lot of those results paying off a lot of things, Minister, that we heard on these very phone calls, these town halls a few weeks ago are now coming into play in the province. So I want to say a top thank you for your steadfast leadership, your dedication, uh, listening, and then acting. A lot of positive news now coming out. No doubt some trying times ahead, but the minister has your back and she's acting and happy to answer your questions. But right off the top, again, hit number three if you want to line up for a question, but I want to give the floor to our Minister of Heritage, Sport, Tourism, and Culture to give you an update on what's happened since our last call and some positive news going forward. Ms. McLeod, the floor is yours. Uh, thanks very much, Tim. It's uh, great to have you back. I hope you and your family are staying safe. And I want to say I know that uh, when the government uh, released, and obviously it impacted this ministry, uh, the short-term rentals, that was a big thing for your members. And so uh, we're trying to be as responsive as we can to the economic change, changes and challenges that we've been facing uh, while still uh, adhering to and respecting the public health orders that have come forward. And, of course, since we last spoke, a number of things have changed, including public hearings at the Standing Committee on Finance and Economic Affairs, a ban on commercial rent evictions, and, of course, the reopening of many communities across Ontario into Phase 2. Before I share with you the announcements for this week's call, I'd like to recap the last few weeks. As you're all aware, I presented to the Standing Committee about the collective impact our combined sectors have faced. I was pleased that 140 presenters supported this effort, uh, and Tim Hudak would probably agree that that will be the largest list of delegations I can remember, at least in my time at Queen's Park. Throughout oh, this yeah, by far. Consult, yeah, it just, it was in, it, it, and they're still going on, Tim. They, they, they went 12 hours one day in the Standing Committee on Finance and Economic Affairs. I think it's just it's uh, incredible. And that was just for tourism and hospitality. Um, so I was pleased that, they, that we had 140 uh, presenters support the efforts. Um, throughout this consultation, our industry partners have estimated that our $75 billion economic imprint has been significantly impacted by losing at least $20 billion in revenues. Many have canceled events, shuttered their doors, or have lost their jobs. Yet, even now, with the reopening of the economy, I'm still concerned about the lasting hit COVID-19 will have on our sectors. I described this, as I did last week, as a triple threat. We're in the midst of a public health crisis. We're in the middle of a economic crisis, and lastly, what has emerged as a social crisis. We've already felt the public health and economic crises in the immediate term, but it will be the social crisis that will threaten our recovery as we are set to reopen the province. I'm going to share with you some polling data, and I'm probably one of the first ministers to do something like this, but I wanted to share polling data for all of you to understand the social crisis that we're facing and I want to explain our path forward after that. We retained in the Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism, and Culture Industries, Ipsos, to complete market research on consumer behavior and what a return to old social experiences would look like between now and six months. This is important because it impacts each and every sector, heritage, sport, tourism, and culture in every single community across the province. So I think it's eye-opening, but I think it's important. And I want to make sure that we all um, understand consumer sentiments and behavior uh, if we're going to come through this together. But I'm going to caution you. This data is blunt. It's eye-opening. And it doesn't contain a lot of good news. Specifically, the research shows that Ontarians do not anticipate being comfortable resuming their old activities 
in the near term. For example, only 12% of Ontarians would stay overnight in a hotel right now. Just 9% would attend a gallery or a museum. Only 8% would go to an amusement park or an outdoor facility or allow their child to play sports or send their child to day camp, with fewer than 7% allowing their own child to take theater or movie lessons, um, attending a bar or a nightclub, traveling by air, going to a large sports or music event in the next month. As I said, these numbers are stark. And just because we have entered into phase two, it doesn't necessarily mean we will have a swift return to normal. That said, although the data does not paint a glowing picture, with most of Ontario moving into phase two, the ministry will continue to monitor sentiments to best keep you informed. And so I just want to recap as well what we've opened in phase two. Twelve of the 25 sectors that uh, reemerged uh, this past, uh, what will reemerge on Friday in most parts of Ontario, uh, relate to these sectors and others, uh, as many as three, also uh, interface with us. So uh, just for those on this phone, um, we'll recognize uh, the following businesses and sectors that will be allowed to reopen as a result of phase two, beginning on Friday in a lot of Ontario. Spas physical fitness and sports training outside of a gym, restaurants and bars for patio dining, photography, film and television production, tour and guide services, water recreation facilities, outdoor recreation facilities, beaches, parks, and camping, outdoor recreational teams, drive-in and drive-through venues, libraries, community centers, attractions and heritage institutions of a certain size, and small outdoor events. Each of these, it's important to remember, come with restrictions and strict and rigorous protocols that you can find at Ontario.ca backslash COVID safety. With the reopening of phase two, both the ministry and Destination Ontario will continue to engage in market research so we can continue to provide our partner industry associations and all of you with the best and most timely information to inform yours and our marketing and operational plans in the immediate to uh, midterm to late planning. As I've said previously, we cause, as we cautiously reopen the economy, we will first develop shop local and support local strategies. Second, when it comes becomes safer to expand more services and there is a greater comfort for assembling and traveling, we will then move to a staycation and domestic tourism marketing plan. And finally, with a full reopening and when the airline capacity is back due to health and economic circumstances improving worldwide, we will then focus on international tourism. But first, as we prudently reopen, we will need to break the social stigma. That's why I plan on leading, taking a leading role in showcasing the safety of our tourism, sports, cultural, and heritage attractions and facilities. To date, I have sa safely visited with uh, Debbie Lowe of the Canadian Sport Institute of Ontario at the training facilities for our high performance and Olympic athletes. I have visited as well uh, the Toronto Zoo to experience their drive-in entertainment, starting with Friday. I will begin moving away from virtual tours to physically touring first my own city of Ottawa with our president and CEO of Ottawa Tourism, Michael Crockett. I'll then this weekend visit the Thousand Islands with Catherine Hobbs and Minister Steve Clark, as well as others. Next week, I intend to be in Blue Mountain with Rob Sampson and my uh, colleagues, Jill Dunlop, um, Doug Downey, and Andrea Kanjan, and then into Muskoka with Norm Miller in the following days to demonstrate that our tourism destinations are working hard to keep their local communities and their customers safe by following those rigorous protocols and standards that put public health first. As I mentioned, there are stringent workplace safety guidelines that all venues, facilities, and businesses must adhere to, so we want to promote that message. Which brings me to today's announcement. Destination Ontario will be engaging in a marketing campaign 
to promote local, to reduce the stigma of supporting our sectors. So specific, specifically today, I am announcing $13 million toward a tourism recovery marketing plan. This money will be in addition to market research we are providing and supporting with our RTOs. It is beyond the in-house marketing support we will continue to provide, and it is outside of the Tourism Development Recovery Fund $1.5 million investment. The funding will be broken down this way. $6.95 million will go to our 13 RTOs, including Ottawa and Toronto. $700,000 will go to our sector associations that Destination Ontario has established relationships with, and $1 million will be available for support for other marketing purposes. I want Ontarians to rediscover their communities now, as it's safe to do so. With this $13 million investment, along with, with the Ontario.Live marketing campaign, which will be launched today at 11.30, we will begin to deal with our social crisis to help reconnect our people with our places and rebuild the heritage, sport, tourism, and culture industries that play such an important part on what makes Ontario so special while driving our economic recovery. All of this work will be guided by our 14 ministerial advisory committees who have reported in on everything from live music to air travel, to amateur sport, to book publishing. This will all form the basis of our COVID-19 recovery, rebuilding and re-emergence plan. I'd ask that all of you continue to participate in our ongoing consultations. And I suggest that those of you in the culture, sport, heritage, heritage and art sectors consider applying to be a presenter to the Standing Committee on Finance and Economic Affairs no later than June 17th, with present presentations starting with mine on June the 25th. I must say I continue to be impressed with the creativity and ingenuity of each person on this phone. You are the people that uh, make sure I get up in the morning to do what I need to do to support our sectors that contribute so much to the uh, way of life that we have as Ontarians. And the hope that I believe we all have at the end of COVID-19 to restore our economy as a leader, uh, not only in Canada, but throughout the rest of North America. I, I must say in particular, I would like to say uh, thank you to our dedicated team at the ministry. Uh, they have been working nonstop. So to my deputy minister, Nancy Matthews, I know I speak for everyone on this call in saying how much we respect, admire, and appreciate you and the entire team uh, in the Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism, and Culture Industries in making sure that uh, there is a calm, consistent message coming from our, our department and at the same time leading an advocacy role at the Jobs and Recovery Committee uh, of Cabinet. So uh, with that, Tim, happy to take any questions and uh, looking forward uh, to reconnecting with so many people on the line. Terrific, Minister. Thanks so much. We have uh, now well over 800 uh, folks uh, on this call. Uh, you are listening to Minister Lisa McLeod, the Minister of Heritage, Sport, Tourism, Culture, Industries, updating you on what is happening in your sector and actions by the government. If you want to ask the Minister a direct question, please hit 3 on your phone and we will queue you up. I just want to say, Minister, thank you very much for the presentation. I uh, I uh, have to say respect uh, a ton that you uh, let folks know the polling numbers, even if the information is is not good on how consumers are reacting right now. It's better to know the facts than to pretend otherwise. And I just want to say thank you for going out yourself to all these tourism destinations live and in person, showing that kind of leadership and to send a signal to Ontarians to get out and support their local tourism destinations and across our province. And of course, I know you'll probably talk more about uh, what we had a lot of pre-submitted questions on. That was around the tourism marketing plan to hear today, $13 million, folks, toward the tourism recovery marketing plan, I think is a major step forward and shows how Minister McLeod went to bat for you uh, at Cabinet and with the Finance Minister. So I think I'll ask a couple of pre-submitted questions and go to the live callers. Again, hit three if you want to do a live call. We have the Minister until 12 noon today. Um, one a question I want to read off the top from Greg Elmhurst. I think this is on the minds of uh, many on the call today, Greg Elmhurst is with Elmhurst Resort in Keene, Ontario. Minister Greg says, is there any indication when dine-in meal service will resume in restaurants? 
Uh, yeah, so for those of you who have reached phase two, and of course uh, your community has, you're going to be able to eat, uh, uh, you know, dine on a patio uh, this Friday, and Michael Crockett and I are planning on doing that at the Grand and the Market in Ottawa. And so there's there's that opportunity in terms of what a dine in locate what a dine in um, experience will look like. Well, that would be in in stage uh, sorry phase three. And um, I, I think that uh, that will be highly dependent on uh, what the containment of COVID-19 looks like. And of course, um, as, uh, as different um, uh, cities and communities reach different levels, uh, that obviously would not be consistent across the province. But again, uh, in terms of the, the restart um, at stage two, uh, it, we're not expecting to see dine-in. So it, it will be a, a last for patients, but I can tell you, uh, just having been um, on the call with the folks in Muskoka, some of the excitement about um, how you know they're going to continue service um, in, in different ways. Because as you noticed, uh, our Attorney General, Minister Downey, announced just the other day uh, that there, there will be a liberalization there as well with their liquor laws and where they could serve. So um, they don't necessarily need to be attached to their manufacturing facility. So I think that uh, we're, we're trying to find creative ways to support the restaurant sector um, while uh, still at the same time putting public health first. Hello? Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> I blew it out of the gate, man. That was, you were so there. It was perfect. So as I was saying, <laughs> um, folks, uh, I'll repeat myself because that sounded really good. Um, please do hit three uh, on your phone to ask Minister a question. I, what's awesome about these calls Minister McLeod does is she's open, she's transparent, she takes your live calls, whatever you want to ask about. So do hit uh, three. Uh, on the dial. I'll ask one more pre-submitted question because I bet it's on lots of folks' minds. It's a general question. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to queue up our first two callers, Bob and then uh, Johnny. So before you get to Bob and Johnny, again, hit three on your phone to participate directly with the minister. Question, minister, from your own backyard, uh, Shanisa Pereira of the Ottawa Festival Network uh, in Ottawa asks, is, is there a slightly clear timeline on when larger festivals will be allowed to happen? No, again, I think it's fairly consistent with the last question. I mean, obviously, uh, as we move into phase two, uh, we doubled the uh, number of people that could be uh, in, a, in, a, in, in a, an event. Um, and that, of course, certainly when you look at uh, places of worship, uh, allowing them to have 30% of their capacity. But I would say uh, that's highly dependent on uh, the containment and the spread of COVID-19. And uh, when certain communities move into... Um, uh, different phases and so obviously in our city I, I you know I uh, listen let me be the Nepean MPP for a second here on this line I'm not sure if I should but uh, I, you know for, for the city of Ottawa to be the largest uh, community in um, geographically and uh, population wise in the province uh, to be open I was quite excited about um, and so you know we got to all of us continue to do that public health uh, um, public service, uh, making sure that we continue to follow the rules. And when we do that and we can contain the spread of COVID-19, uh, that's when we can start to uh, re-engage. But at this time, no, there there is no indication or timeline of when we can reach that other than uh, into getting into a different phase. But I think we're, you know, we haven't even opened up um, most of the province uh, yet. It'll be Friday before that happens. And then we'll start to get a sense of, of how that, that will play out. Got it. Thank you, Minister. Okay, let's, uh, Eric, let's go to the first of our live callers. Again, if you want to get on this list and ask the Minister a question uh, directly or give her advice, hit three on your phone. Uh, the format we use, we do ask you to tell us where in the province you're calling in from and the name of your business or institution, and then please ask your question. So, Bob, Eric, let's clean uh, cle up uh, Bob here to ask the first question. We can definitely bring Bob live. Bob, welcome to the event. You're joining us live. Please go ahead. Good morning, Minister. So my name is uh, Bob Garson, and I'm the president of NODAL, Northern Ontario uh, Tourist Operators, or Nature and Outdoor Tourism Ontario. And my uh, question would be that uh, although we've opened up to domestic, many of our operators in Northern Ontario, uh, due to the borders still being closed, um, 
are, are having a difficult time and that uh, will require money to retool, not only retool, but to survive this uh, when the border does open and uh, the season will be late and it will be hard to survive. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, it's obviously, I know in Northern Ontario, you've been hit hard and, and uh, you've got some very strong ministers up there, including Greg Rickford, who was uh, very persistent in his support of us wanting to make sure that uh, those short-term rentals and accommodations were lifted uh, so that we could support you. Um, obviously, when we're looking at those uh, coming across from the United States, uh, the Premier has been quite clear uh, that... Um, not until we can uh, contain the spread of COVID-19 and the virus uh, will he want to open the borders. The federal uh, government has also similarly uh, maintained uh, the, the border issues in addition to um, uh, you know heavy quarantine rules uh, for 14 days for those crossing the border. Uh, so I think those are you know significant issues, but it's also one that we have to be mindful of. And I know uh, it's, it's also an area of concern for many of those who live uh, on the Thousand Islands, on the St. Lawrence, um, in Niagara, of course, Sarnia and Windsor right now um, have been impacted uh, with a delayed quarant with, with delayed uh, phase opening because of their proximity to the border. So obviously, this is a situation that's very difficult. Um, in terms of support, you know, we're going to continue to work with um, the Tourism Industry Association of Ontario, and we'll work with David McLaughlin of your RTO. Um, so that as we advance in our planning and we provide, uh, you know, our recommendations based on, you know, that work, but also the deputations we've received at the uh, committee uh, and how we re repair and uh, then, you know, recover and then eventually rebuild and reemerge, uh, what does that all look like? So uh, in terms of, of, of um, you know, subsidies or monetary support, uh, these are all things that we're looking at, but we have a great deal of sectors in a very big province we want to make sure we look after. And uh, that's probably not the answer you want it, but the answer I can give you given the circumstances that we're in. Thanks, Bob. Yeah, you bet, Minister. Always best to give people the facts, even if it's not uh, great news. Be transparent uh, as you are and uh, give it to us uh, straight. Um, so before I go to uh, Johnny, who's our next uh, person uh, keyed up, to ask you a question, um, uh, it's funny, you're getting a lot of the same questions that, that I do in my capacity as CEO for Ontario's Realtors. Let me say, too, uh, you mentioned earlier, thank you for your advocacy to get short-term rentals opened up again across the province. They're just hitting that tourism season. So I know our members were really happy to hear that. And here's a question from Jennifer Grundy, Minister. She's uh, uh, with Tourism Thunder Bay. It's a question I get in my job, too. So the question is, is it now advisable for Southern Ontarians to be traveling north for vacation for an Ontario staycation? Is, is that now okay? What's the government's guidance? Look, um, I think the Premier's been pretty clear. If you're going to uh, go to cottage country or you're going to go up north or um, if you're going to come in now to the city of Ottawa because we're able to offer the haircut or whatever, um, you know, uh, the, the Premier has been, been very clear about being cautious and bringing your own food and those sorts of things. Um, but my preference right now um, is obviously supporting local and, and making sure that we can have a safe experience in doing so. And so Destination Ontario, along with, uh, along with our tourism division within the ministry, We'll be building out plans, uh, as I said in my remarks, uh, first and foremost, to, to shop local. And uh, right now at 11.30, we're launching Ontario.live. Uh, you know, I know so many of you have seen it before, but we're actually now putting the marketing dollars behind it and, and putting it out into the, to the universe. Uh, we want to make sure that we continue to support um, local uh, efforts and so that people can reconnect with their own community. Um, because as I said, if you look at that data, it's pretty stark, right? There's uh, actually I'll go right back into another deck. I just just because I want to give everybody a sense of what we're dealing with, and I didn't discuss this one, but right now and and uh, I I used to represent a rural riding, a suburban rural riding, now just in the city. Only 24% of Ontarians right now will go to a farmers market, and you know that used to be my staple every Saturday morning. And so just when you think about the the reticence that people have to do activities that we would um, wouldn't bat an eyelash about months ago. Uh, another one that uh, I, I found was quite stark because I live in a city and uh, obviously I, I serve in Toronto. Only 16% of Ontarians right now would travel by public transit. Um, so we've got a lot of work to do in getting Ontarians to want to reacquaint themselves with their own communities. 
um, let alone getting them to travel in different parts of the province. So I think that as we move forward, our marketing strategies should really be um, those baby steps and in, in getting people back into their, their old social norm um, in a safe way. And so we'll focus on that and we'll work with uh, the appropriate folks over at the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Labour who, uh, you know, I can't say enough about my colleague, Monty McNaughton, uh, when you look at the hundreds of protocols and policies his team has put in place over this, totally, I say it all the time to him, gold standard. Um, so almost every single type of business in this province has a rigorous stress set of uh, policies that they must adhere to, even just to open in phase two. And um, so I think, you know, we want to we want to make sure that people are safe and then we want to build on that. Um, so that we can make sure that that social crisis that I'm afraid of um, is, is mitigated uh, in the best way we possibly can by supporting local. All right, again, folks, you're listening to the Minister of Heritage, Sport, Tourism, and Culture Industries, Minister Lisa McLeod, her sixth telephone town hall with operators across the province of Ontario in those important sectors. If you want to ask a question or give advice to Minister directly, please hit three on your phone. All right, we'll take a step away from tourism. Obviously, top of mind for many people, let's go into the world of sports. So, Eric, let's uh, queue up Johnny here, who has a question about sports funding. We can do that. Johnny, welcome. You're joining us live. Please go ahead with your question. Good morning, Mr. McLeod. Um, my name is Johnny Misley. I'm the Chief Executive Officer for Ontario Soccer. We are your um, largest PSO in Ontario and uh, one of your oldest PSOs as well. But my question is uh, really uh, on behalf of um, our brothers and sisters in the amateur sports sector. We have been devastated by the COVID-19 pandemic, and many of our organizations are fighting, um, and for many, uh, from going under. And uh, there's obviously an urgency around two key areas. Uh, one is the OESF core funding that we still have not received, that many of us are depending on during our um, essential services stages of management during COVID-19. And secondly, the federal announcement, which seems to be an eternity ago from the federal government regarding um, sport funding that's going to be trickled down through MSOs, NSOs, and eventually down into the governments. So that can be help uh, reaching out to uh, organizations um, like amateur sports. So I was wondering if you can please give us um, concrete updates in those areas. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, Johnny. I appreciate that. And oh my gosh, uh, I love soccer. And I know that um, we were we were excited to get uh, MLS uh, up and running in their training conditioning. Uh, so look, uh, t- two points on that. The first one in terms of our regular funding, uh, I signed off on that note. So that should be flowing. Um, there was a bit of a delay uh, with the Treasury Board Secretariat. Um, so we've, we've uh, dealt with that. And we're, so we're going to get that um, out the door, and so my ministry official, so Steve Harlow, will have those specifics. Um, but that program uh, funding should uh, be starting to trickle th- through soon. And then the second point on the federal announcement. Um, I want to be charitable here, but the allocation that they were suggesting we receive uh, was nowhere near um, the level of support uh, Canada's most populous province with its the most amateur athletes would or should receive. So we're still negotiating with the federal government um, to make sure we get our fair share. And when I say fair share, I'm not talking about, uh, you know, um, we have 40% of the population and we were only getting 30% of the funding. Um, you know, we're 40% of the fund, uh, population getting uh, the same funding as Manitoba. So um I am going to continue to be uh, um, vocal about that and uh, will then, when we get something that is uh, more um, in line with uh, our population and our requirements, then we'll we'll engage in those bilateral um, agreements. Terrific, Minister. Thanks. Yep. Uh, a big soccer fan myself. Played, coached, and, by the way, in preparation for politics, a soccer referee for a while. I was a soccer coach. It was the best job I ever had. It was, uh, I played soccer my whole life. And then um, when I went to university, I spent, if you can believe it, I, I, what, a, what a great training ground for me. I worked for Parks and Rec at the town in Glasgow. And so I coached, uh, I, I used to run the soccer camps uh, during the day. 
No way. Great. Well, we should yeah, tell Johnny then he should put together a, uh, a match of some kind. Yeah, well, I think we all know if I ran down a field right now, I might fall on my face. <laughs> I don't think we want that image. <laughs> I'll be right, right there with you. Let me ask another uh, sport question. This one is a pre-submitted as well uh, while we're on the topic. So Caitlin Green, and Caitlin's with Field Hockey Ontario out of Burlington. Uh, she asks, when will the Ontario Summer Games release a statement on the status of the 2020 Games? Sure. Uh, so uh, last week, I made uh, the decision that uh, there was some. Dis- there was we were always canceling the games, or I should say, postponing them. So they have been formally postponed. But the uh, decision point was whether we proceeded in 2021 or 2022, and so we were able to come to an agreement that we would postpone to 2021. And so uh, they will be happening, but they will not be happening this year and uh, next year. As I said on multiple occasions will be a marquee year for the province of Ontario. Um, So consider these types of events. So we are going to be hosting next year, the 15th uh, anniversary of Luminato, which was created uh, as a result of SARS. We will be hosting the 50th birthday of Ontario Place, the 50th anniversary of the Junos. We will be hosting the 54th Canada Games in addition to the Ontario Games and the 109th Grey Cup. And so I have asked every member of the Legislative Assembly, and you know what, I'm going to ask every single person on this phone, to figure out an event um, that is a key event in your community or within your organization that we can promote in 2021, because that's when we're really going to get people moving around this province again, and that's when we're really going to get people celebrating. And one way to do that is through sport, and uh, that will be happening through not only the Ontario Games, but also uh, the Canada Games. All right, folks, if you want to ask Minister McLeod a question, please do hit three on your phone. We have well over 800 people on the call today, the six of these telephone town halls. Uh, next up, uh, Eric, uh, no surprise to you, Minister, a uh, strong champion of tourism, in fact, a special guest star on one of your previous uh, town halls, Beth Potter, the president of the Tourism Association, is on the line. Eric, let's put Beth through. We have Beth joining us live now. Good morning, Minister. Good to speak with you again. Um, I was just wondering if for the um, businesses that are on the call today, um, especially those that have been given the go-ahead to reopen, if you could just um, uh, give them some guidance as to uh, where they can find clarity around um, uh, opening protocols and uh, safety guidelines um, so that they you know, are are opening in a safe and 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 a, a um, uh, so there's continuity for the for the for the guests as they come around. Yes, a- excellent question, and I know that uh, Beth and I have been talking a lot about this because she's been working with the World Tourism Organization um, in making sure that we have uh, some of the best standards in the country, um, not only in the world and obviously in the world. So. We're going to continue to work with uh, Beth. Uh, The ministry has engaged in that work as of last Friday. And uh, Beth and I met. uh, Beth, I think it was, I can't remember, was it yesterday or the day before? We've been been pretty busy. Um, But that's uh, that's great. The other area, and I think you should really check this out, is um, this website. And I'll say it a couple times slow. um, But this is where you're going to find all your one-stop shop for the safety standards that we need. And that's Workplace Safety and Prevention Services. So you would go to WSPS.ca. And that is, again, WSPS.ca. And there you can find their COVID-19 hub. And it gives you all the resources that businesses and workers will need to get back to work safety. And a lot of these have been industry-led tables. And I'm going to just uh, shout out to, you know, um, uh, Jason Mozik uh, from uh, NABET, who is with the film and television industry, sitting at that table, informing them directly of what film and television um, a return would look like uh, for his union and for the workers there. So we're informing it, it's a bottom up and um, bottom down, a uh, top down approach that we've uh, we've taken. So the ministry is is connecting with those on the ground, and those on the ground are bringing their industry standards uh, internationally uh, to the forefront. So I think we're going to be one of the safer environments as we 
move to reopen because of this spectacular work that's been done by our workplace safety folks. And so I would encourage anybody to go to WSPS.ca. And that is for everybody, by the way. So your community museums, your libraries, um, you know, your sporting facilities, uh, your cultural attractions, art galleries, everything. I think just uh, that's where you want to you want to check that out so that you make sure you've got um, the uh, the processes and protocols in place. And then, of course, uh, just finally, you should make sure you check with your own municipality um, who may have even stricter uh, standards than the, than the guidelines that we have put forward. Folks, uh, you are part of the sixth Telephone Town Hall hosted by Minister Lisa McLeod. And my name is Tim Hudak, CEO of the Ontario Real Estate Association. Uh, honored to be the host today. Again, hit number three. We have the minister for another 18 minutes. We do have room on the uh, queue here if you still want to get in for a call. Um, minister, there's two that I'm going to combine that were pre submitted questions. They're kind of in the same area. It's going to focus on the culture side of your portfolio. The first one comes from Kelly Thompson with the Renfrew Public Library. Kelly asks, how do you see public libraries providing services for the near future? And then we have one from Heidi Ferguson with the Corporation of the Town of Northeastern Manitoulin and the Islands, a little current. Uh, Heidi asks, Mr. McLeod, I'm wondering if there have been any talks of when museums or information centers might be able to open to the public. So a library question and a museum question combined. Sure. Well, um, great question, Kelly. I think I could write a book about your MPP. It's John Yakovsky, my seatmate. And so I think, could you, Tim, uh, Tim Hudak? I think you could write a book on uh, John Yakovsky as well. And I think that uh, we're pretty happy that we've, we've been able to offer the curbside pickup. And that seems to be going over very well and very popular. In addition, the ministry does fund 376 public libraries. So uh, we're getting that money. If it hasn't already gotten out the door, is is happening right now. Uh, we were able to, to get that money freed up. So that's great. And Heidi, um, you know, museums, as a result of um, the announcement for phase two, um, are there. So just making sure you've got the right size and, and uh, ensuring that uh, a certain amount of people um, are able to go in. Otherwise, uh, it, the larger museums, it will take a, a while to uh, get them back up and running. But, um, you know, I think that uh, we're at a place where our cultural assets can start to get back uh, to, to, to business in a certain way. And so I'm looking forward to, um, to visiting some museums when, when they're able to uh, open. And uh, that's uh, I think that's great news. And again, uh, just to put a plug in for Ontario.Live, if you have digital content, uh, get that into us so we can make sure that we can support that. And as I said, at 1130 today, we did make that announcement. You know, last weekend, we actually got out the Hudak family, Miller, and uh, Miller's got a great interest in history. So we went to the Laura Secord homestead in, uh, in Queenston, Ontario, Maitland. We hiked a bit along her trail and went to the Brock Monument. So Looking forward to seeing you more places uh, ourselves. Although Maitland, my youngest, got Laura Secord mixed up with Laura Engels. So she thought it was a little... Oh, really? The <laughs> so it, was it Miller that really enjoyed her time at the ROM, or was it the Science Centre that you just took them to? Um, so, well, she's, she's a fan of both, but you remember the Science Centre. Yeah, I mean, she she loves going uh, there and anxious to, uh, to get back. It's pretty pretty much a, an annual trip for us with both of the girls. All right, so we've got uh, Stefan, uh, Minister. He's been uh, patiently uh, waiting uh, in line. Stefan's question around campground reopening across our province. So, uh, Eric, let's show Stefan into the room. We can do that. Stefan, welcome to the town hall. You're joining us live. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, my name is Stefan Deschain. Uh, my wife and I own Barrow Park in East Willenberry, Ontario. And uh, we were very happy to see that most campgrounds are allowed to open, but we are wondering because we are in not in an area that is allowed to open currently where the campgrounds could be allowed to open across the province because otherwise we are encouraging people in the Toronto area for travel further to get to campgrounds. And since B&Bs and cabins are for short-term stay are allowed to open, we don't think campgrounds are any riskier. Well, I mean, this is a conversation that we've had uh, with, with our public health officials and uh, they did not deem it um, to be uh, 
to, to open them during a phase one, even when short-term accommodations and rentals uh, were, were able to, to uh, be greenlit simply because of the sanitation issues. And so, I mean, that's a, it's, it's a possibility uh, to look at it, but I, I'm, I wouldn't want to encourage that because I think that uh, the best way to do this is, is to continue to work with public health. And, and hopefully your municipality, um, you know, each week the uh, public health will be, and the chief medical officer of health will be reassessing um, phasing. And so, uh, and, and who can, you know, will reopen and hopefully your municipality will be, uh, will be able to do that, but happy to offline. Um, have you send uh, us a, an email at minister.mcleod at ontario.ca. Again, minister.mcleod at ontario.ca um, to look at your specific case. All right, the pre-submitted question here, Minister, in a world that is a, a big part of our economy we've not touched on yet with any of the uh, questions or calls to date, and it's from Alicia Wickenski, who's with Breakthrough Entertainment in Toronto on the area of media, film, television. So she's got a multiple uh, part here, so I'll... I'll hit the main highlights. I'm interested to learn more about television production being allowed to start up again in Ontario. When do you think Hamilton, a major production hub, will be open? And, Minister, are crews from Toronto allowed to travel and work in the open areas? Uh, well, at first, I think that, um, you know, I just I want to respond in the, in the sense that uh, I'm very happy that we were able to secure film and television production to be open uh, in this phase. Um, it was important for me that we uh, we not lose our competitive advantage. Uh, British Columbia and Quebec both announced that they will be uh, resuming film and television production uh, this uh, this week. And I know that uh, that you know Los Angeles obviously and uh, specifically Hollywood um, are still looking at that. So I think it was important for us to have that competitive advantage. Obviously difficult because um, we are uh, you know dealing with uh, our largest. Uh, film production um, community, uh, being uh, Toronto and the GTHA, uh, being shuttered. Having said that, areas like uh, Ottawa, uh, North Bay, and uh, the Muskoka area, as well as other places where where there are um, you know hundreds of film friendly locations, can begin. Uh, with respect to the crews, um, you know I think people would use their own judgment, but I I don't see film and television production. Um, uh, starting up overnight, I mean, it, it, it's got the green light to go ahead on Friday, but I think just judging from some of the conversations we've had, there's still a lot of things to be worked out. Uh, so we want to make sure that that commercial um, uh, ability is, is there. Uh, and and I think that, um, you know, physical distancing must be taken into consideration, uh, that we want to make sure that that's maintained. And so we continue to work with people. And I had the opportunity just this past week to uh, sit down with um uh, Peter Postolopoulos and uh, from Tribro Studios, as well as uh, Jonathan um, Ahi from Stratagem, and so just to talking to them about uh, what does a return look like, and and so and then just on the question of uh, crews from Toronto uh, coming to Ottawa or no North Bay, you know I think that we would still uh, suggest that uh, people where they possibly can stay in their own locations. Um, but if they do uh, come out, that they make sure that they have uh, isolated uh, in, in terms of moving from one area to the other. All right, let's uh, move now to uh, a caller. Uh, again, uh, to all the uh, listeners uh, here today, uh, leaders across all of these uh, vital sectors, please hit three on your phone. We still have the minister for another 10 minutes. We can squeeze in a couple more calls. Uh, this one, Minister, caught my eye, so I'm going to open the door here for Jim from Niagara asking about reopening Niagara area tourism attractions. Uh, Eric, let's go to Jim. Jim, you're joining us live on the line now. Please go ahead. Hi, Jim Passat here, Executive Director of Canada's Accredited Zoos and Aquariums. Uh, Minister, first off, uh, thank you very much for your hard work uh, for our sector. I know you've put into it. Monday was, by and large, to most of our members, a, a good day. Um, we'll, we're, we're going to see many of our accredited members in Ontario, seven to be exact, be able to open very soon. My question, though, to you is really around sort of the Niagara and the GTA. Those zones at this point in time uh, remain in, in, in phase one, if you will. Uh, what sort of criteria do you think um, your, uh, the health authorities are looking for before they can open up uh, Niagara and Toronto, and I, don't, I know you have a, 
a very positive uh, view of Niagara and the, and the importance of the tourism uh, down there. Yeah, look, I, I uh, uh, let me just start with saying this. I had the opportunity to do the, the drive-in um, entertainment at the Toronto Zoo, which was spectacular. They're getting a thousand people through there a day. So I think um, for this summer anyway, I'm encouraging as many of those who can to uh, adopt a drive-in or drive-through uh, entertainment system because I think it allows you to um, to, to monetize your creativity and at the same time uh, allow people the the the, the comfort and the safety of experiencing our cultural um, attractions. And I, so I think that's really important. Um, and I think that uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that happen across. Like my, my deputy minister is probably smiling right now because I, and my cabinet colleagues would be smiling as well if they heard this because I, I talk about this all the time. I think that that's what's going to help us get through the summer, um, particularly as a mother of a child. Um, it, it, you know, just giving them an experience is going to be important. Let me talk to you a little bit about Niagara. Um, I've spent the last uh, two days uh, working with Mayor Jim Diodati as well as Anthony Nunciata, who runs the Regional Tourism Organization, and I've had multiple calls with MPP Sam Oosterhof. Um, obviously, this is a public health crisis first and foremost, so we want to make sure that the, um, the spread of COVID-19 is contained and, and, and eventually eliminated. Um, what I have learned um, is that uh, over the past three weeks, the case level of uh, Niagara has uh, steadily increased. And in Toronto, it hasn't really declined. It's sort of flatlined. So we're waiting on on uh, the data to make sure that um, that uh, those areas and those jurisdictions are safe before reopening. Um, but I will say, you know, I recognize, and I think everyone on this phone would recognize that our number one tourism destination in the country um, is Niagara Falls. And so we want to make sure that uh, when they get up and, and operating, uh, that it, it is in a safe environment. And I have assured the mayor and I have assured Anthony uh, that when it is safe to do so and it's, it's time to promote um, Niagara Falls again, that I will be there for them. Uh, similarly with Toronto, Toronto is our largest market, is our financial capital of the entire country. It is our provincial capital. Um, it is uh, one of the uh, not only largest um, jurisdictions in North America, uh, but I think just by the virtue of the fact of its diversity, and I like to call Ontario the world of one province, um, it is one of the most, pers uh, I would say, impressive uh, jurisdictions in the world, um, simply because not only of its landscape and the beautiful you know, waterfront, but um, at the same time, it's, it's cultural and ethnic diversity. I think that's something we should be very proud of. And Tourism Toronto has taken a significant hit. Uh, $5.6 billion loss is what they're projecting in revenues this year. Uh, throughout the city of Toronto. So obviously we have a vested interest in making sure that they're supported as well. So I'll continue to work with you guys and when um, those communities are able to advance into the next stage, uh, then we'll start to see your, uh, your association members be able to activate uh, those types of activities. But uh, until then, until public health makes that clearance, uh, we will be in a situation where um, they have not been able to advance uh, from, from stage one. Minister, we're now in the last five minutes of this call, and again, I want to thank the almost 1,000 people who have joined us. Um, you made some really important announcements in your opening remarks that maybe not everybody caught. Some uh, good news and some not so good news. You talked about your Ipsos uh, polling results, which were um, hard, hard, hard to take, but important to know. And you also talked about an exciting $13 million towards a tourism recovery marketing plan. So you might want to... Um, uh, refresh folks. We do have a question from CD from the Franklin Carmichael Art Group that is in this area, pre-submitted. And uh, CD asks, any suggestions on regaining the confidence of attendees to visit our cultural institutions amidst COVID-19? Yeah, a great question. As you've seen, uh, the numbers are pretty low for people wanting to engage uh, in, in some of these facilities. So I think uh, you know, only about 9% would either go to a, a gallery or museum. Um, and this, you know, this polling data is about two weeks old. So we have to, we have to prove that these are going to be safe uh, and uh, experiences when, when they go to them. And so that's part of my job as, um, as uh, the leader in this organization to make sure that I uh, show my confidence in these facilities. Uh, secondly, it's, it's also my job to lead our ministry and making sure that we have a solid marketing plan uh, to remind people of the great things that they have to offer in their own communities and that it is safe to do so. And, and then of course, all of us collectively just making sure uh, we continue to follow the rules and, um, and support those public health guidelines. 
And so obviously we're going to continue to work on it and I'm going to continue to share with you, uh, you know, the, the information that I have so that we can all collectively work together um, to do better and uh, to ensure that we're supported. But yes, you're right. Um, so the, the money that we're putting forward, $13 million, um, uh, we're, we're pleased that uh, we put forward $7 million of that and Destination Canada has uh, matched it with $6 million. And so that will go a long way in supporting um, a number of organizations in each one of our regions so that they can get back on track and we can support them in doing so. And I can take a couple well, more questions here, Tim. Yeah, you know what? Uh, you, you've gone through all of the questions uh, from folks who had uh, called in, so we're good in that respect. And pre-submitted, you know, there's uh, one last one that I didn't get to. Um, so it's a general question. This is from Catherine Jameson, the town of Perth. And Catherine asks, where can we find specific information and guidelines about our industry for reopening? Sure. So obviously, as I mentioned, I think there are 25 different uh, sectors that we're able to open. Um, I believe 12 or 13 came from us. So if uh, if you're obviously one of our uh, partners, please feel free to contact minister.mcleod at ontario.ca. But again, I'll just go to the point of we have a website, wsps.ca, wsps.ca, which has all of those um workplace safety guidelines that to help bring you in line. And then, of course, once you've uh, gone with, through us and uh, you've gone through um, workplace safety, uh, you may want to also just refer to your local municipality and your, your local uh, chief medical officer of health um, because we want to make sure that as we reopen, it's safe and that people do have confidence um, because we certainly would not want to step back after all of the sacrifices so many people have made at this time. So, Minister, you say you've got time for more questions. So, Remo jumped in pretty fast. So, we'll put Remo uh, on the line for a final question, and then uh, Minister will call on you to provide uh, closing uh, remarks. So, uh, Eric, let's uh, bring a Remo in for a question around festival funding. We can do that now. Remo, you're joining us live. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, Minister. Thank you for taking the time for doing this. Uh, I just had a quick question regarding the uh, Celebrate Ontario funding for 2021-22 season. Uh, would you be able to open the applications earlier so we could get the process started earlier and then say, you know, the approved funding would be provided in, say, January, February? Uh, it gives everyone a lot more time to properly utilize the funds and plan their events because a lot of times you kind of have to gamble whether you're going to get it or not. And, you know, you don't know if you're going to get approved, so you don't want to spend all this extra money. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And next year we're going to all need it because, I mean, you obviously know what happened this year. Thank you very much. Thanks, Remo. Like a totally great idea. I, uh, I want to see how we look at 2021 in a very strategic way because these festivals and events are going to be absolutely key. So whether that is through a fund like Celebrate or a different one uh, to get Ontario moving again, um, you know, we'll have those considerations over the summer, but I certainly like the idea of front-ending this and uh, you know, closing the applications early and getting notification out early because let's face it, I do know what happened this year and you know what happened this year and uh, we're all sort of wondering what does it look like uh, post-COVID-19. And uh, as I said, I, I, there's a number of key events uh, in the province that will be happening that we're going to want to support and help market. And if we can make life easier for you guys, that will be key. Uh, 2021 will be a marquee year for the province of Ontario. Uh, and we want to make sure that you guys are up and ready to go if you're running festivals or events or you're celebrating a, a, a special uh, anniversary or year. All right, we have hit 11.59. Oh, just ticked in at 12 noon. So glad we got Remo in. Minister, you have exhausted all of the questions, both uh, pre-submitted and uh, lined up to call. So why don't we now just uh, turn over to you for some closing remarks. Okay, thanks, Tim. I'll be brief. I think it's more important, I guess, to get the questions and answers in, and I'm glad that we were able to do that. I want to thank everybody for your patience over the last number of weeks. I know uh, sometimes I've been uh, unloading a lot of information. Other times uh, still there are questions that I, I may not be able to answer at this time because we're really writing the playbook as we uh, we learn the game. And um, it, 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 that isn't ideal. So I want to say thank you to all of you for your patience with me um, as, uh, you know, not a new minister anymore. 
Uh, on the 19th of June, I will celebrate proudly um, and gratefully that I have been your minister and uh, really have enjoyed the work and the people and watching the creative process in each of your sectors unfold as you deal with uh, you know, this unprecedented situation. And so we're going to continue to work with you. I'm going to make sure that uh, Ontarians see um, the sense of, of pride that I have in all of you, and we're going to uh, do our best and, and, and do right by you. And so please keep in contact with us. And if you don't mind, um, I'm really proud of the work that our team at Ontario.Live did uh, out of Destination Ontario and other places. If you don't mind maybe sharing that around today just to show people um, while we might uh, be stuck at home, uh, together we can experience Ontario's finest in uh, tourism, culture, sport, and art. So with that, Tim, thank you for joining me. It's great to have you back. And to all of our team, thank you for uh, being part of this. No, of course, Minister, thanks for having me back. Uh, thank you again for taking what you've heard on these calls, six to date, and putting them in the Cabinet and getting results. I know people will be looking forward to even more details about your exciting announcement today of the $13 million towards the Tourism Recovery Marketing Plan. And that, of course, is additional funding beyond the TDRF $1.5 million. So that's great news. And folks, if you had further questions, um, you know, please uh, go ahead and submit them for the uh, next time. The Minister looks forward to uh, all the advice that she's had that's through this. It helps inform communications going forward. And don't forget, uh, work with your representatives at the Ministry of Heritage, Sport, Tourism and Culture. Uh, they're available to support you and your organizations as this pandemic continues to unfold and as we get people moving around the province of Ontario once again. Thank you so much, Minister. Thank you so much, folks, for joining this call. We are now concluded.